vital physiological need. We have to sleep. And we all have to sleep. In the last 24 hours, you all slept. And in the next 24 hours, you will all sleep. Now, your choice is to do that comfortably at home or when you're driving down the A1. <laughs> Sleep doesn't care when it happens, but it definitely will happen. So it's your choice. You will actually die of total lack of sleep just after you would die from total lack of water and six times quicker than you would die from total lack of food. So that's how important sleep is in, for your body. Now, a few years ago, I came up with this, uh, and every time people copy my slide, they turn it upside down, because it's the well-being triangle, and people think triangles as the point at the top. Nutrition, exercise, sleep. Sleep is at the bottom because it supports those two. If you want to eat healthily, get a good night's sleep. The more sleepy you are, the more you crave sugary and fatty foods. You'll actually, if you are sleepy, eat 400 calories a day simply because you are sleepy. If you want to exercise, well, one of the things you need to exercise is motivation. That comes about by getting a good night's sleep. If you exercise when you are sleepy, you are at a 75% increased risk of a sports-related injury. And if you do get injured, you'll, of course, take longer to recover if you haven't had a good night's sleep. So it's three if you try to do either of those two and you're not doing that, then you're basically fighting with one arm tied behind your back. So here's a few questions. You don't have to shout out or write anything down. That's just embarrassing. Um, so we'll do... I'm safe at work, so it doesn't matter if I'm sleepy. Yeah, you get away with it, don't you? The company's got a drugs policy and an alcohol policy, but they're damned if they can measure sleepiness. <laughs> so, uh, I can't be caught. Cool. Uh, as you can imagine, it's false. You have slower reaction times, impaired judgment and decision making, a decline in attention, decreased alertness, increased moodiness and aggressive behavior. The more sleepy you are, the less able you are to predict you're going to fall asleep. Uh, the Department of Transport a few years ago did something saying the first yawn is too late if you're driving. So they say you are a very, very bad job. They did a study in anaesthetists and 74% of the anaesthetists who said, yeah, I was awake during the entire operation, 74% of them had fallen asleep without noticing. And you all do it, don't you? Yeah, you're driving along. Yeah. Or, where, did, where did those last eight miles go? You've all done it. Um, being awake for 18 hours is as bad as being drunk. Now, none of you would drink and drive. It's become socially unacceptable. <coughs> but the impairment's exactly the same, whether you've had alcohol or whether you've been awake for 18 hours. Lack of sleep is the only cause of fatigue, and of course it's not. There's workload, social factors, individual factors, shift work. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sleepy, I'm stressed because my boss is not a nice person, I have to work long hours. Yeah, probably you do. But it's your choice to go home and binge watch something off Netflix. Yeah, so it's not, you can't just blame your employer for being a horrible person. Uh, the older you get, the fewer hours of sleep you need. That's actually false. Sleep need remains unchanged throughout your adulthood. So an 85-year-old needs the same amount of sleep she did when she was 25. But what's difficult is to get that sleep, because old people wake up more frequently during the night, <coughs> usually because you have to go to pee. Um, Shift work becomes harder with age, you don't have that recovery. Young people can recover from shift work a lot easier. Um, but old people are great for the early morning shift. They love it, because they wake up early. Um, most people need eight hours sleep to function at their best. Well, actually, that's false as well. 
I know it's just true here, but it's false. He <laughs> needs to change his slides slightly. Seven or eight hours is recognised as being what most of us need, but sleep need is like height. You have short people, you have tall people. Now, if you looked at this room, there's no real outliers here. You, know, you don't see many people the size of Warwick Davis in your life. And you very rarely meet Chinese basketball players. You know, I, f I find it incredibly disconcerting if I ever meet anyone taller than me. Because they're just freaks. I mean, they're, just, they're wrong. Um, so you do have extremes, but most of us are in a relatively tight band of around 7 to 8 hours. If I sleep a lot now, I won't need sleep later. Yeah, I've got a big day, you know, big day tomorrow, I'll go to bed early and get some more sleep and that will be fine. <coughs> well, no, you can't. Sleep's not like money. You can't save it up and you can't borrow it. And you know what it's like when you go to bed early, don't you? You just lie awake until the usual bedtime anyway. It's a complete waste of time. Drinking coffee kills. How many of you use coffee, caffeine, functional energy drinks, which you all know as Red Bull, to get through the day? There are two honest people in this building. <laughs> the rest of you are liars. Um, now, the problem with, with coffee or caffeine is it's a short-term effect. It takes 30 minutes to kick in and then its effects on performance are relatively short. Its effects on sleep are relatively long. So long after you've had the boost from the caffeine, you're not, it, it can potentially be disturbing your sleep later. If you are going to use caffeine, do not use coffee or tea as your drug delivery me measure because you cannot taste caffeine and the amount of caffeine in any one cup of coffee or tea varies widely. So you can go into McDonald's and say I'll have a black coffee and that can contain anywhere from no caffeine at all to 400 milligrams. <clears throat> you don't know, you can't taste it. Oh, I'll have a strong coffee, doesn't matter, you don't know how much caffeine is in it. Now, two, if you had two strong black cups of coffee, that's two zeros, which is zero. Two 400 milligrams is 800 milligrams, which you think, yay! Except for coffee over 600 milligrams is actually sedative. <laughs> so it will actually try and put you to sleep, which is not what you thought you should be doing. So this is why the highway code says functional energy drinks because you buy a can of Red Bull, you know it's got 75 milligrams of caffeine. It has to, it's a labelled thing. If you have to use caffeine, do that. <coughs> if you are driving, opening the windows, turning the aircon up, or turning the music up, does nothing at all. Okay? It just means that when you die in a horrific RTA, you're listening to your favourite radio station. So why do I spend my life talking about sleep? Well, this is a quote from uh, Thomas Decker back in 1609. Sleep is that golden chain that ties health and our body together. Sleep, sleep is so important that basically, up until very recently, nobody wrote about sleep. Because it seemed pretty bloody obvious. It's like if you published a book called How to Breathe. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, repeat. <laughs> um, it might be scientifically valid, but it's not going to be a million seller. Uh, and up until recently, that was it. You know, you went to work, you came home, you had your tea, you went to bed, you got your sleep, you got up, you went to work, you came home, you had... It was all we did. So why is sleep important? Well, sleep's important. If it wasn't important, we wouldn't do it. From an evolutionary point of view, if it's got a brain, it sleeps. If it's a mammal, it sleeps. It's almost exactly the same as ours. And when we come to our closest cousins, it sleeps is almost identical to ours. So if there was a way that we could do without sleep over a million years of evolution, we'd have learned how not to do without <coughs> sleep. Uh, now, there's a reason for showing you orangutan, the western lowland gorilla, and it's not just that they're cute, although undoubtedly they are. 
The fact that these guys never sleep in the same place twice, which means each and every night they need to make a nest. And what's interesting about that is the nest has to be comfortable. If the nest is not comfortable, they either modify the nest or actually make an entirely new nest. So why do we need sleep? Well, sleep remains relatively a biological enigma. We know it's uh, non-negotiable. We know it's needed for recuperation and restoration of both physical and mental functioning. But to be honest, physical restoration, you're doing it now. You're all sitting down, your heart rate's <laughs> dropped, your blood pressure's dropped, you're not using your major muscle groups, so your body is repairing. So that doesn't, that happens all the time. It doesn't just happen during sleep. Sleep's important for the endocrine, metabolic, and immune system. If you have one bad night's sleep, the next day you're four times more likely to catch the common cold. It's as simple as that. Sleep affects all organs of the body, but primarily sleep is of the brain and for the brain. So the only bit of the body that must have sleep is the brain, because only during sleep does the brain's activity reduce to any degree. And that's important because the brain has to do its housekeeping sometimes. And one of the things the brain does when it's asleep, is to get rid of neurotoxins that are built up, because you, a third of the energy you consumed today will be used by your brain. Your brain's always working, and so it needs to get rid of the toxic byproducts. Uh, an example of this, any of you got a domestic cat? Any of you got a pet cat? Yeah, you know every once in your while the cat goes mental, doesn't it? It just freaks out, runs around like a loony, and stops there and goes, I don't know what happened there. Because in a cat, there's a buildup of a neurotoxin in the cat brain that causes, when it gets to a high level, it causes, causes that behavior. Because that neurotoxin is actually amphetamine. Your cat is having a speed trip. Which is why it looks a bit confused. Uh, in any one 24 hour period, you're in one of three distinct states of being. You're either awake, which thankfully you all still are, uh, or you're in non rapid eye movement sleep, or you're in rapid eye movement sleep. Now, REM and non REM are as different from each other as they are from awake. They're different states of being. You don't notice the difference, because frankly, you're asleep. Uh, but they are very, very different from each other. Non REM sleep makes up the majority of nights, 75 to 80% of nights, traditionally made up of three stages of sleep, each of increasing depth. The stage one is a transition from awake to asleep. If you are awake, and you're going to go to sleep, you'll go through stage one sleep whenever you fall asleep. It's, of course, the lightest stage of sleep, such that if I had to wake you up in stage one sleep, you'd say, why did you do that? I wasn't actually asleep. Um, and this is the sleep that you're in when you know you wake up and you go, I had a terrible night's sleep, I didn't sleep a wink, a wink and your, your missus says, well, you're snoring all the way through it. Um, so that's because you're in stage one sleep, so you don't know because it's so light. Stage two is 50% of the night. You'd have thought the thing we spend 50% of the night in would be very, very important. It probably is. We just don't know why at the moment. Stage three, deep, slow sleep, 25% of the night. Slow sleep is the most important part of sleep. Slow sleep is the bit of sleep that makes you think like you've had a good night's sleep. So it's the restful, recuperative part of sleep. And slow sleep does four things. Memory, forgetting, learning, and growth. So everything about today that you experience, tonight you will process that information during deep sleep. Some of what you experience today you can safely forget. Yeah? Many of you will have driven here, many of you will have had to stop for traffic lights, many of you may have try to ram into the back of a lorry carrying explosives because you're only a four on my really unscientific <laughs> sleepiness scale. But you forget all that. But there are some bits of today that it's important that you need to remember. So your brain is going through each piece of information that you receive today, deciding whether to save it and lay it down as a memory or whether it's safe to forget. So if you're trying to pass an exam, there's no point staying awake all night cramming. Because if you do that, you gain the information, but you don't file it away. So when you sit at the exam the next day, you know what it's like, oh, I did some, oh, it's on the tip of, oh, I know that. You know you've got it, you just don't know where you've put it. So if you want to pass an exam, read what you need to remember three times before you go to bed, get a good night's sleep, your brain will file all that information away and you'll be able to retrieve it the next day. That's not a guarantee you'll pass the exam, you may just be stupid, but uh, <laughs> I can't help that. Uh, <laughs> 
you learn during the night. So if you put a new task that you need to learn, practice that task until you're as good at the task as you can be before bed, get a good night's sleep, you'll be up to 17% better for that task. And that can be a mechanical task or a verbal task. And slow wave sleep is the only time you physically grow in the entire 24 hour period. You only grow during the Rapid eye movement sleep is the second state of being, 20-25% of the night. Rapid eye movement sleep is when you have your long, stormy like dreams. Everybody dreams, everybody dreams four or five times a night, but you can only remember a dream if you wake up during the dream. If you don't wake up in a dream, it's gone and it's gone forever. Now when you are dreaming, your dreams are real. They're as real as your mind and body is sitting here now is real. So if something happens in a dream, you can have a physiological response to that. And you've all woken up with your heart pounding, breathing heavily, sweating, feeling fear or anxiety. That's because whatever you are doing caused you to feel like that. And you've all woken up and think, I can't possibly go to work today. I've just spent all night fighting dinosaurs and frankly I'm knackered. <laughs> well, that's because your body and brain think that that's what you've done. Now, it would be a bit embarrassing if four, four or five times a night you'd have run around the bedroom being chased by dinosaurs. So nature protects you and your bed partner from harm. When you dream, you lose muscle tone. Your brain sleep is involved in emotional well-being and emotional memory. So deep sleep is factual memory. <coughs> what happened? REM sleep is how do I feel about what happened? So you need to have both. So how is a typical night put together? This is just a night for a typical adult. Essentially, Within 20 minutes of you switching the light off, you should fall asleep. If you regularly take more than 20 minutes to fall asleep, it would be indicative of insomnia. However, falling asleep too quickly is also a problem. How many of you fall asleep the minute your head hits the pillow? You are sleep deprived. It should take a finite time, about five to seven minutes, for you to fall asleep. If you're falling asleep immediately, you are asleep deprived. You'll quickly go through the lighter stage sleep into your first period of, of deep consolidated sleep. After about 70 to 120 minutes, you'll have your first REM period. That actually may only last five minutes long. You'll then have some more deep sleep, and then on a 90 minute cycle, you have your REM period. The last REM period of the night may be 45 minutes long. So you get the majority of the deep <coughs> restorative sleep in the first third of the night. The latter part of the night is in that lighter stage two or in REM sleep. Now you are preferentially designed to wake up during REM. <coughs> so when you got up to go for a pee last night, I can confidently predict it was either three to three and a half hours into the night or around five hours into the night. If you don't believe me, do it tonight. <laughs> look at the clock when you go to sleep and look at the clock when you have a pee. Don't do the maths because you'll just wake yourself up. <laughs> um, and who would want a man who was awake and knew what to aim for at that time? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and you almost, if you didn't set an alarm this morning, you will almost certainly woke up in this last REM period. And of course, because you woke up then, you'll have remembered your dream to, a, to an extent. The fact that you remember that dream, of course, doesn't mean that's the dream you tell your partner about. Because let's be honest, the vast majority of your dreams are really, really dull. And your partner has already started to suspect that you're quite boring during the day. <laughs> <laughs> but why in your fantasy life at night can't you be a bit more excited? <laughs> and of course, if that joke were remotely exciting, you still couldn't tell your partner about it because they never appeared in it. <laughs> <laughs> How does sleep change with age? Well, children need a lot of sleep. Why? Because they need a lot of deep sleep. Why? Memory, learning, growth. Every important thing about the development of a child occurs during the night. You mess up the night, you mess up the child. There's 45 minutes less sleep than a child needs has a measurable effect on that child in terms of their performance, their academic performance, and their behavior. A newborn needs 16 to 20 hours. A 10-year-old needs approximately 10 hours sleep. You've got two points on the graph. It draws a straight line through it. You've got the rough amount of sleep any one child needs. So you go through your three teen years, then you get teenagers. Teenagers are different, and teenagers are odd. Teenagers are different because teenagers need more sleep than adults. Why? 
puberty, physical, emotional changes, they need sleep to deal with them. So teenagers need more sleep. Teenagers are odd because teenagers genuinely need to go to bed later than adults. We have no idea why, but there is a shift in their biological rhythm. However, that shift is only at most two hours. So your average teenager should be going to bed around 11, 11, 30 and sleeping between nine and nine and a half hours. Which means if a teenager says they cannot get out of bed at nine o'clock in the morning, they might be telling you the truth. A teenager who cannot get out of bed until midday is lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Once you go through your teenage years into your early 20s, your sleep need becomes fixed for life. I've told you this. Old people do not need less sleep. What happens as you age is you progressively lose that deep restorative sleep. So as you age, your sleep becomes less refreshing. So for instance, my mum is 76 years old. She sleeps through the night. But she wakes up and thinks, what the bloody point of that? <laughs> and the other thing is, because you don't have that, you think about children. Children will sleep anywhere, do anything. If they wake up, they can go straight back to sleep because they've got lots of deep sleep. There's a lot of pressure for them to go to sleep. But if you don't have that deep sleep, there's no pressure. So you get up, you go to the bathroom, you have a pee, you come back. Men can do that in a minute and a half. Women take a little bit longer because they wash their hands. You get back into bed and you lie there for an hour and a half. So why? Well, it's not the bladder anymore, you've just emptied the bladder. So what is it? Pain, anxiety, your partner snoring, or whatever. So that's the problem with the elderly, or as we get older. <clears throat> and there's a sex difference in this loss of slow-wave sleep. Men lose their slow-wave sleep a lot earlier than women. Men start losing their slow-wave sleep from the age of 35. Women from the age of 55. This is why, as we get older, men's memories go. We don't have that deep sleep. This is why men statistically die younger than women. It's not. Now, women don't lose their slow sleep as early because women are important. Women are the glue that holds society together, but women can have babies. So women need to stick around and look after the babies, whichever man she's with at the time. <laughs> you can tell I do watch Jeremy Carl far too much. <laughs> Everybody watches Jeremy Carl and think, what strange people. I watch Jeremy Carl thinking, why has my life never been as much fun as that? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's why we have that sex difference. The men are just basically useless. Um, so, how much sleep do you need? Well, I told you, sleep needs like height. It's genetically determined, some short people, some tall people, some short sleepers. Famous short sleepers, Genghis Khan, Adolf Hitler, Margaret Thatcher. Famous long sleepers, me and Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the effects of sleep? <coughs> Micro sleeps. If you're driving along at 60 miles an hour and you fall asleep at the wheel, it'll take your car four seconds to come off the road. Try it tonight when you drive home. Uh, set your car up, straight and level, 60 miles an hour, take your hands off the wheel, count slowly to four. It gets really, really exciting around the three. <laughs> I have to say that's a joke. You might think, of course it's a bloody joke. Why are you telling me this? I did this talk to a group of. Um, uh, Consultant psychiatrist in Essex once, and this guy stuck his hand up and back and said, That's very irresponsible that you should suggest we do that. Which proves you can be a consultant psychiatrist and a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Reaction times are low attention unstable, which is poor lapses in speech, short term memory, suffers unable to sustain performance. Problem solving and judgment deteriorate, the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the part of the brain that does all the clever things planning, decision making, problem solving. And that's the last bit of the brain to develop. It's the bit that makes you, you, rather than just a hairless chimpanzee. It's the bit that does the clever stuff. But it's exquisitely um, affected by sleep deprivation. So what you have is inflexible behavior. <coughs> yeah, you know, the bunny in the headlights scenario. Everybody remembers Chernobyl. People say, oh, Chernobyl was just unsafe Soviet technology. It wasn't. Chernobyl was a routine procedure that went wrong in the middle of the night and none of the guys reacted to it quickly enough. You know when you see a James Bond film and you've got the, the needle almost going into the red? Well, they stood there in the control room at Chernobyl going... <laughs> might mean something. <laughs> oh, yeah, it means that, doesn't it? <laughs> 
So is that bunny in the headlight, like that, that, that fixation on the task not being there to be fixed, go and press the button somehow. Um, sense of humour goes. You know these sleepy people in the office, they're the miserable ones. Um, <laughs> old guns, this taking. You know, when you're sleeping, you're driving home, you just take that corner just a bit <coughs> quicker than you would normally do. And pain is also affected. If you get a good night's sleep, it would reduce pain. Simple as that. The easiest thing to do. Um, I mentioned about appetite. If you sleep, <coughs> you crave sugary and fatty foods. That's not really good if you've got guys in truck and their only option is McDonald's. They're going to go for it. And if I brought out here now a big bowl of apples and a big bowl of chocolate muffins, I would take a lot of apples home with me. Because you're sleepy. Sleepy drivers now kill more people on Europe's roads than drunk drivers. Now, one of the reasons for this, of course, is the reduction in drinking driving. But the other thing is, they may cause only 23% of accidents but they cause 83% of fatalities. Why is that? Well, when you're drunk, you do something. It may be completely stupid. You'll break late, you'll swerve, but you'll do something. If you fall asleep at the wheel, you don't do anything. How do the police know it's a sleep-related crash? There are no skid marks. So you are going to hit what you're going to hit very, very hard indeed. And that's either going to result in you being dead or the other person being dead. So they account for more fatality. <coughs> we talked about how the <coughs> low levels of sleep deprivation are the same as being over the driving limit. The most vulnerable time for accidents, 2 to 7 o'clock in the morning. Nobody, but nobody, should be driving between 2 and 7 o'clock in the morning. No. Um, so if you, if you only had 7 to 8 hours sleep, that's 1.2 times higher risk. 6 to 7 hours, that's 1.8 hours uh, times risk. 5 to 6 hours, 3 times increased risk. If you had a practice in your company that increased the risk by 3.5 times, you would stamp on it tomorrow. Wouldn't you? Yeah? not going to say the obvious thing, why aren't you going to do it with sleep? Because I know why you're not going to do it. Every day you have a poor night's sleep, it is additive, yeah? So each day, you don't recover, every day you have poor sleep, your performance and your driving ability get worse. Significantly worse. This is lapses. This is where you would not notice somebody pressing their brakes in front of you in time to break. Over seven days, goes from five to 18. If you have two weeks of six hour a night sleep, yes? At the end of that two weeks, your performance is equivalent to you having had no sleep for two nights. That week actually has the very simple, how does the sleep catch you best? <coughs> Five things here, very, very simple. Sleep promoting environment. Dark, quiet, cool, comfortable, fresh air. How dark's dark? Well, the red standby light on your TV is enough light to disturb your sleep. So when I say dark, I mean pitch black. Quiet, 35 decibels. Background noise. Intermittent peaks of 45 decibels. A snorer, 85 to 95 decibels. Get rid of the snorer. <laughs> I don't know, I, I mean ask them to go to the back, don't not pillow over their face, <laughs> not legal, man. just ask them to go to the back room, or divorce. Um, moderate temperature, in order to get a good night's sleep you need to lose one degree of body temperature. Now you lose that body temperature out of your head and face, so that's the big fleshy thing that sticks out from under your duvet. <laughs> so your bedroom needs to be cool, your bed can be warm, but you need that temperature gradient. So around 16 to 18 degrees for the bedroom. If it's cold, heat the bed, don't heat the bedroom. You should never run the heating overnight. Because if you think about it, most people's heating is set around 22, 23, yeah? Now, in winter, 22, 23 seems warm. In summer, if your bedroom's 22, 23, you're lying there going, I can't sleep, it's too hot. The same temperature. Heat the bed, not the bedroom. 
quite, I've done quite well ventilated. Fresh air is good for sleep, comfortable, by a bed. Um, this is the key, quiet mind, black body. Now you know that you can be physically exhausted, you get into bed, and you can't fall asleep. Why? Because your mind's racing. So you need a quiet mind. How do you quiet your mind? No idea. Uh, I know what I do, I read every night before bed. Better than that. Strong association between sleep and bed. If you're asleep, you should be in bed. If you're not asleep, you shouldn't be in bed. You should go into the bedroom expecting to fall asleep. If you're not asleep, don't stay in the bed. Get up, do something else. Go to back to bed when you're sleepy. If you've been awake for 30 minutes at the start of the night, you still haven't fallen asleep, get up, do something else, go back to bed when you're sleepy. If you've been awake for 20 minutes in the night, you still haven't fallen asleep, back to sleep, get up, do something else, go back to bed and sleep. Don't really matter what you do, have a cup of tea, read a book, listen to some music. No, no great effort towards sleep. I must get to sleep, 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 I must, you're not going to fall asleep, are you? Yeah, so as the Nike advert says, just do it. An absence of regular thought process is about sleep. Oh, I've got a big day tomorrow. I, 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 I've really got to perform at my best tomorrow. So if I don't, the boss will notice and he'll sack me. And I won't be able to get another job and I, I won't be able to afford the mortgage and I'll lose the house and the wife will divorce me and I'll die in a cardboard box in the centre of Chesterfield. I can't sleep now, can I? <laughs> So don't think about it, just do it. We, we spend our time obsessing about it. Don't obsess about getting a good night's sleep, just get a good night's sleep. 